Are you considering making the leap of faith to living in a van? Well, I've been living and traveling in my van for almost three years now, and these are the top five things that I wish I considered before making this huge commitment to leaving everything behind and dedicating my life to van life. But before we get started, I just want to let you know that today's video is brought to you by Anchor, America's number one charging brand. This incredibly powerful charging station serves as a reliable emergency backup in sticky situations. It has a max output of 770 watts. It comes with both AC and DC outlets and is virtually compatible with all essential devices that you would ever need. It's best paired with the new Anchor Power Solar 3 Port 11 100 watt solar panel. This compact and collapsible solar panel not only allows you to recharge your powerhouse by harvesting the energy from the sun, but with its exclusively integrated SunCast module, it's able to charge at such an efficient rate, better than most brands out there. And on top of that, it has smart and stable charging, which makes it so you don't have to manually restart the solar panel every time a cloud goes by and blocks the sunlight. However, the Anchor Power Solar 3 Port 11 100 watt solar panel isn't available just yet, but it's planned to be released in late September. So keep an eye out for that. So if you're interested in checking that out, make sure to click the link down below. Go check it out, pick you one up because it's highly essential just in case of an emergency. Now, let's get right back to the video. I'll see you there. I am just parched up in this Georgia heat, so I gotta grab me another polar pop. <laughs> <laughs> well, buddy. Don't worry guys, it's it's seltzer water. It's it's not alcoholic. I don't drink. Number one, I'll be honest, you don't really save that much money living in a van. Whether you live in a super luxurious van or you live in a van that's super bare bones and it just has a bed in it, for the most part, the money that you're spending on gas every month is basically your rent. And that really adds up over time. And for most people, when they go to buy a van to live in, they often can't pay for it in cash. So you have to take out a loan and that loan, you have to make a monthly payment on. And that loan payment could be up to six, $700 a month. And that right there, is essentially rent on a house, an entire house. And then that with on top of gas money, it, 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 you, you really just don't save that much money. However, if you do have the option to buy a van outright, make no payments on it, of course you're saving money there. And of course, if you're not traveling as much, you're definitely saving money there as well. But for the most part, for people that are going into van life for the first time, they wanna be able to travel. So just wanted to let you know, Gas money adds up and it really does it often end up being seven, eight hundred dollars a month even if you're traveling all the time. So something to consider. Number two, that's four. Number two. <laughs> if you plan to live in your van alone, like I have for the past almost three years, you should know that it gets incredibly lonely sometimes. And I want to dedicate a whole entire video to this eventually, but for now I'm just gonna sort of graze over it a little bit, you know what I'm saying? If you're living in a van, you're often traveling from place to place pretty constantly. And through all of that, it's hard to make and maintain genuine lifelong relationships with people because long distance relationships, whether they're romantic or platonic, I mean, they're hard to maintain and the interaction over social media can only go so far. And if you're like me and you crave physical, human, in-person interactions, uh, with reoccurring people that you can love and trust in your life, you're gonna have a hard time because you often meet people and you make a great connection with them, but their lives are going in a different direction and maybe they're traveling somewhere else or maybe they're staying somewhere and you're going off to the next destination. And that can be really, really difficult when you're living and traveling in a van, meeting new people all the time in new places all the time. It can be really, really taxing for your mental health and it's definitely taken a toll on mine over the years. Number three, on the other side of things, let's say that you aren't traveling all the time and you're just living in your van in one spot. Some people do that. Some people don't have the luxury of traveling all the time and that's okay. But if you do end up doing that, you should know that it kind of sucks like living like that, if I'm being honest. I'm doing that right now in Georgia after traveling for a few months. And the reason it sucks is because, I mean, the essence of van life is to have the ability to pick up your house and everything you own with you and just go anywhere in the world whenever you want 
without packing a single bag, which is awesome. But if you don't have that opportunity to do that and you're stuck in one place, this tiny house on wheels, I, <sighs> I'm so sorry. I am genuinely sorry. This tiny house on wheels just starts to feel a lot more tiny and you start getting that cabin fever a little bit. I don't know, that's a personal opinion for me, but that, that is something to consider. You're already living in a tiny space and I think the reason why van life feels so cozy is because you know you are traveling to different places all the time you're not spending a lot of time in the van you're going off to destination to destination exploring different cultures and places so really you're not in the van a lot but when you're in one place all the time you'll find yourself spending a lot more time in the van than you normally would where if you were traveling or something so something to consider number four I actually made a video about this last week, but I wanted to include it in this list because I think it's incredibly important and not enough people on social media talk about this for whatever reason. But the summers are hot and the winters are cold. And a lot of us that join this lifestyle don't have thousands of dollars to invest in an electrical system that is able to withstand the power consumption of a 12 volt AC unit or a reliable heater inside of the van. Because let's be honest, it would take hundreds of amp hours, which is thousands of dollars, and a giant solar array in order to be able to power a reliable air conditioning unit in your van and even a heater sometimes and even though a heater is a lot easier to install and doesn't take nearly as much power some people can't even afford that so if you're living in your van without an ac unit or a heater when the peak season comes around these walls and the insulation that you install with inside your van can only do so much for you to keep your van cool in the summer and warm in the winter because at the end of the day, you're living in a metal box, essentially. And if the sun is beating down on you in the summer, you're basically a microwave. And even though you may have ventilation on the roof and you've got open windows, and even if you're parked in the shade somewhere in the summer, I promise you, your van will never get cooler than it does in the shade. That's just how it works. Unless you have some sort of cooling unit in your van, even though you're cycling air in and out through your ventilation in your van, it's just never gonna get cooler than the outside shaded temperature. And on the other side of that, even in the winter time, if you've got all this insulation on your windows, you've got all your windows closed and all your vents closed and whatnot, your body heat only produces so much heat and it could be 30 degrees outside and you would still be really cold in the van. It would be warmer for sure, but not warm enough to be in just shorts and a t-shirt. So unless you have the ability to move your location depending on the season, which a lot of people can't do, just know that if you're stuck somewhere north in the wintertime, it's gonna be cold. And if you're stuck in the south in the summertime, it's gonna be freaking hot. So just be ready for that. Don't let that catch you off guard because you need to know. Number five. Let's get real serious for this one because I think this one is actually the most important thing to consider before you make this leap of faith to living in a van. And for some reason, nobody really talks about this one either. And I think it's really, really important that you do. So yeah, routine. If maintaining a stable routine in your daily life is really valuable to you, you should know that having a healthy routine while living in a van is really difficult. And this isn't just coming from me, this is coming from so many people that I've interacted with and crossed paths with that live in vans as well. And they also experience this too. Like I said before, when you fully embrace this lifestyle, you find yourself traveling from place to place all the time, meeting new people constantly and experiencing new things every single day, which is great and awesome because that is the essence of van life. However, after a while of experiencing those things, you'll start to crave the sense of stability where you know what to expect of each day. And I know that sounds really ridiculous and it's really, really hard for me to explain why exactly you lose this lack of routine in van life, but I'm trying my best to explain it. Van life is full of spontaneity and new opportunities are being thrown at you all the time. And when you're in a new place with this cool new hiking trail or cool new camp spot or this awesome brewery or something, you often wanna take advantage of, of those things and you start to lose a sense of routine. I, I don't know, I, I guess all of our definitions of routine is very different, so it's hard to say. But I will say for me, 
when I'm in a new place all the time and all these new opportunities are being presented to me and I'm constantly feeling spontaneous, I want to take advantage of those opportunities. And I often put aside the important things that I need to focus on to go experience these new things. And those important things could be different for each people, but hopefully you know what I'm getting at here. It's hard to explain because I think it's very situational, but the overall theme is maintaining a stable routine in a van while traveling is really difficult and I've experienced it firsthand. So maybe that's something to consider for you before you decide committing to this lifestyle. Well, there you have it guys. Those are my top five things that I think you should consider before making the commitment to living in a van. Hopefully you found them useful and if you did, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you live in a van and there was something that I may have missed, let me know in the comments as well. Let's start a discussion for those that are watching this video who are considering this lifestyle. There are a lot of great things about this lifestyle. I mean, the, the van life is full of freedom and it's beautiful. However, social media doesn't like to talk about all the downsides of this lifestyle. The fact that it can be really difficult sometimes. And I don't want someone who's completely unaware of that to jump in this lifestyle and then have a really difficult time. So let's try to prevent that from people. Let's start a discussion in the comments. Let's talk about all the negative things. So when people are doing research about this lifestyle, they can refer to this video going forward. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't really know how to close these videos out, but <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, do all that stuff. I'm gonna stop talking. All right, guys, have a good day. Peace.